Hi, I'm Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how to derive the expression for the electric field of a disk of uniform charge Q radius R at the point P which is on the axis of the disk and a distance A from the center. And my strategy for this is to first split the disk into tiny rings, each with the small charge dQ, then use the expression for the electric field of a ring to get dE in terms of dQ, and finally to integrate from an R equals zero at the center of the disk to R equals capital R at the edge to get the total electric field for the entire disk. So the first part is to split the disk into tiny rings, and I'll just draw in a single ring that has a charge dQ and an area given by the circumference times dR. The next step is to use the expression for the electric field of a ring to get dE in terms of dQ. The expression for the electric field of the ring is equal to k times q, which is the charge on the ring, times a, which is the distance from the center of the ring to point p on the central axis, divided by r squared plus a squared, where capital R is the radius of the ring, all to the power of 3 over 2. And if you want to see a video where I derive this, then just check out the link in the description box. Now, if you remember, the electric field from a ring was along the central axis. There were no components off of the central axis. So that means that in this problem, dE is actually pointing in the same direction as the x-axis. So it would have an i-hat unit vector component. Woo this is nice because it means there are no off-axis components. No matter what size of ring we have, the electric field, like every single dE from every single ring, is going to point along x. And so that means that the math is a bit easier. Yay! When we're setting this up in this problem, Q is actually equal to dQ, because that's the charge on the ring, and capital R is actually equal to small r, because we're using small r to represent the radius of the ring. And so then I get dE for the disk is equal to k times dQ, because I'm substituting in for Q, times A, divided by, and now I have small r squared for the radius of the ring, plus A squared, all to the power of 3 over 2. In this case, k is a constant and known, A is a constant and known, and it would be really handy in this problem to integrate along r. So I need to somehow express dq in terms of r. And that's where the surface charge density comes in. Because the charge on the ring, dq, is equal to the surface charge density times the area of the ring. And we can get the surface charge density, which has the letter sigma, as the total charge on the disk divided by the area for the disk. And so this is a property that's true for a given disk. And the other thing to notice here is that dq is expressed both in terms of the surface charge density sigma, but also dA. And for our ring, dA is going to be equal to 2 pi r times dr. So that's the circumference of the ring, 2 pi r times the thickness, dr. When I put these together, I get that dq is equal to sigma times 2 pi r dr. And if I'd like to, I can actually substitute in q over a. These are the total charge on the ring divided by the area of the ring times 2 pi r dr. Then the expression for dE gets substituted, gets this version of dQ substituted into it. So I get d equals ka times q over a, 2 pi r dr, all divided by r squared plus a squared to the power of 3 over 2. Since the total area for the disk is equal to pi times capital R squared, I can even substitute that in. And the only advantage of doing that, I guess, is that the pi's cancel out. And then again, since dE is a vector, I can multiply this by i hat to get the unit vector component. So I have dE in terms of dQ, and then I actually transform dQ into something that I can integrate by expressing dQ in terms of dR. And now I'm actually ready to integrate along r. So I'm going to integrate from the center of the ring, where r equals 0, to the outside of the ring, where the radius small r is equal to capital R, to get the electric field at point P. And I've separated this out so that I have the constants on the left, and I can pull those directly out of the integral. 
And on my handy dandy integral sheet, I can see this integral and realize that if I just replace x with r, then I have exactly what's here. So I can actually just use this to evaluate the integral. And then I'm rearranging the top slightly, switching q and a, because I noticed that when I have 1 over the square root of 0 squared plus a squared, I get 1 over the square root of a squared, which is equal to 1 over a. And I can multiply that in to help simplify the expression. So the next step is to multiply the a inside the brackets. So I get 2kq over r squared times a over a minus a over the square root of r squared plus a squared. And then the a over a simplifies down to 1, so I have 1 minus a over r squared plus the square root of r squared plus a squared. And that gives the magnitude of the field, and that's the simplest form that I can get right now. And again, because the electric field is a vector, I would give that the direction i hat according to the diagram that I used and I used when I set up this problem. The last thing I'm going to do is to compare with what I have in the textbook. Now in this case, I've used the constant k, and my textbook uses epsilon naught, the primitivity constant. So I would actually substitute in k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and I would also substitute in the surface charge density, which again was q over the area, where the area was pi r squared. So first I substitute in k, and then I rearrange it to collect 2 over 4 epsilon naught, and then q over pi r squared as two separate terms. And then notice that q over pi r squared is equal to sigma, and 2 over 4 simplifies down to 1 half. And then this is the final expression that I have from the textbook. So really, it's exactly the same thing as what I just derived, except that what I had derived was more in terms of the constants given by the problem, and the version in the textbook is possibly a little simpler. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video helped you out, then please like it or write a comment in YouTube to let me know. Good luck with physics.